Hey guys and welcome back to the channel where I present you this beautiful Toshiba Satellite Retro Laptop. I've been wanting one of these for a very long time and all of a sudden it came up in a local listing for next to nothing so I decided to purchase it. So this is an iconic retro laptop as far as I'm concerned. So not only does it have the right color, the right shape, but it also has just the right amount of CPU power with this Pentium 200 MMX CPU inside. Fast enough to run the majority of the Windows 98 games, excluding the 3D ones, but slow enough to still be cool and retro. Now the Toshiba satellite lineup has been around for a very long time and it has been able to keep this kind of look and feel for a very long time as well. And this is just a really cool laptop. Intel Pentium MMX inside, designed for Windows 95, but runs Windows 98 perfectly fine. So for me, this hits the right spot in terms of retro laptop computing. So let's take a look at the specs. So the Satellite 310 comes with a 200 megahertz Pentium processor with MMX technology, a 2.1 gigabyte hard drive and 32 megabytes of RAM. So yeah, this was definitely in touch with tomorrow. Now moving to some of the selling points. We have the 12.1 inch color active TFT display in the 310 CDT case. We have multimedia with the CD-ROM. We have high performance coming from the Pentium 200 MMX. And we also have USB. So in terms of connectivity, this thing has got you covered. Now I'm not going to bore you with all of these detailed specs here, but I do want to highlight a couple of things of which I find that this is an ideal case for a retro PC or retro laptop. It is sufficiently powerful, it has the active TFT color screen going for it, it has USB support, meaning that you can put software on this thing very easily. It has a battery that still works, so that's pretty awesome. And it also has the Yamaha OPL3 sound chip. And on the front here, we have the Toshiba logo and the satellite logo. And when we open her up, we see the keyboard. We have the 310 CDT. We have three LEDs related to the keyboard. We have the mouse pointer and two mouse buttons and a pretty nice keyboard. But it is kind of dirty, so let's give it a quick clean. So I'm going to use some alcohol wipes here to clean everything, get most of the crud off. And some special attention for this mouse pointer here, which is pretty dirty to say the least. So I'm just going to put this on this pen here and give it a good wipe. And the dirt comes off quite easily. And then we can just put it back. The mouse button is the same. I mean, those are the things that are used a lot. The bezels of the laptop, give those a good wipe. And for the screen itself, I'm just going to be using some water and this cloth that I use here to clean the windows of my car. Just want to make sure that you do this when the screen is turned off and has been turned off for a bit. And again, we're just going to clean the top, the sides, and the back of the laptop. And this already looks a lot better. So let's turn it on and see if she will still boot. In touch with tomorrow. And we have Windows 98 booting. We've got the mandatory 1990s sports car in the background. So this is an 800 by 600 resolution on the active TFT display. 16 million colors. And you gotta love the sound that this hard drive makes as it is booting into Windows. Just take a listen. The computer also comes with a built-in setup program. So upon hitting escape when the computer is starting, you will get this prompt. And then you can use this two page system setup utility where you can configure stuff like battery save modes, boot priorities, 
You can also configure the various settings related to serial ports, parallel ports and the sound card. So time for a quick tour around the laptop. On the front we have five LEDs. We have the battery compartment and we have a front grill. So first LED is for the power. Second LED is to indicate that the laptop is on. Third is the battery. And then we have the hard drive LED and the CD-ROM and disk drive LED. So let me just show you where the battery is. So we can slide this little thing outside and then we can take the battery out, which is about this size. And it just slots right back in. The battery is still working on this laptop, which is really nice. On the side, we have the CD-ROM drive, a 16-speed CD-ROM drive. And we also have a 3.5-inch 1.44 megabyte disk drive. We have the PCMCIA slots next to it. So here you can pull down this little piece of plastic and then you can insert your favorite PCMCIA cards in here. And using this button, you can eject them again. We also have a Kensington lock. And on the back, we have an external display connector, VGA. We have the parallel port, serial port for a mouse. We have a fan. We have the infrared port. We have a USB port, which is pretty nice, meaning that you can hook up USB thumb drives for external storage and for swapping programs in and out, which is really convenient. We also have a PS2 connector, and this can not only be used for hooking up a mouse, but also for hooking up a keyboard. So that's really nice. So here I have a PS2 keyboard that I can just hook up to this connector and combined with the serial port on the back of the laptop, you can use a full-size external keyboard and a mouse for optimum productivity. Here we have the power button, which kind of slides back before you can push it. We also have a reset button next to it. And on the opposite side of the power button, we have the audio controls. So the volume rocker, the speaker output, microphone input, and audio input. And the speakers on this thing are pretty good. Just take a listen. So with Windows 98 started, let's take a look at my computer. Go into properties, device manager, and take a look at what we have. So we have the 16 speed CD-ROM drive, TIAC. We have the floppy disk and the hard disk drive. We have the chips and technologies 65555 PCI SVGA card floppy drive, hard drive controllers. We have the infrared communications device, standard keyboard. I have a serial mouse attached to it on COM1. We've got some dial-up adapters and the infrared port. We have the PCMCIA card bus controllers, the COM port and the parallel port, a Yamaha OPL3 SAX sound device, which is pretty nice. And we have the USB controller. So 32 megabytes of RAM. And let's take a look at the hard drive. And here we have the 2.1 gigabyte hard drive. Now, one of the first things I wanted to do with this laptop was to load some software onto it. So I thought about using this USB thumb drive because it was supported, right? So I just inserted it in the back of the computer 
it was automatically recognized by Windows 98 as a USB mass storage device, which was excellent. And as I was installing the driver hitting next, next, finish, this blue screen of death occurred. Yep, that's right. As soon as I was finished loading the driver, I got this blue screen. So yeah, this is not good. And obviously the computer could not recover from this. So yeah, I'd say this machine is pretty stuck and requires a reboot. Now, of course, this isn't the only USB thumb drive I have in my collection. But this Sony one also didn't work. This one didn't work. And this USB 3 32 gigabyte USB thumb drive, my most modern one, actually worked on this Toshiba laptop. So again, it was recognized as a USB mass storage device. It prompted me to install the drivers, which I did. And upon hitting next, next, finish, I didn't get the blue screen of death, but it installed the driver successfully. And when I opened up my computer, I noticed that I had an F removable disk icon in my computer, which was my 32 gigabyte FAT32 formatted USB thumb drive. With the USB port operational and a compatible thumb drive, let's take a look at the PCM CIA options. So this was a very popular mechanism back in the day to add functionality to your laptop because stuff like networking, modems, uh, wasn't really standard in these laptops. Now, I have a whole bunch of these PCM CIA cards and most of them are pretty useless as they are modem related like this tornado modem card or this uh, ethernet card, which is pretty handy if I also had the extension cable to go with it. Some of them combined a modem as well. I have this empty PCM CIA card here, no idea what this is. This is an interesting one because this allows you to add compact flash cards to your laptop. So this is a compact flash to PCM CIA adapter, which is pretty handy. And this is also nice. So this is a networking card with a built-in network connector because it's very easy to lose the connector cables that go with the original ones. So with the hardware issues out of the way, it's time to look at some games because ultimately that's what we are going to be using this laptop for. And because of the fact that it has a pretty powerful CPU, you can run a lot of the Pentium class games. So that basically means that all of the games from around, let's say 1993 upwards to 1997, 98, should probably run fine on this machine, providing it doesn't rely heavily on 3D. For example, um, this platformer here is running excellent. I do have to say that when you bump up the resolution and particularly also the color, it does struggle a bit. For example, here 800, I think it's 640 by 480 in 16 bit colors is a bit much for this uh, computer. So you need to take that into account. If you want more color, you obviously need to lower the resolution, but then yeah, that also has its drawbacks, obviously. Micro Machines is another popular title from back in the day. I think this was released around 1997. Now this one actually works pretty well on this laptop depending on the track that you select. For example, this one here on the pool table is running perfectly fine. I mean, there is no janking on the screen. Everything is pretty smooth and makes for a really nice experience to play some of these retro games on a portable device like this. Other tracks, for example, here where you have a lot of reflection on the water, you do see the game slowing down a bit. And yeah, so whenever there is like 3D calculations involved, you will see that the uh, built-in video card of this laptop is really not up to the task.
Now fortunately a lot of the popular games do allow you to tweak the graphic settings to some degree so you might have to do away with some of the more high detail and horizon and distance settings in Need for Speed 2 for example because if you do it uh, full blown you will see that the PC does struggle a little bit but if you, you know, reduce the screen size a little bit and turn off some of the details, it's actually pretty doable. Some games, however, simply refuse to start. Like, for example, this Formula One game from 1997 doesn't want to start because this computer doesn't have sufficient 3D hardware to run this game. But classics like Doom, for example, aren't any issue at all obviously this is a game from 1993 so you would expect this to run very smoothly on a pentium class machine and of course it does so yeah it's pretty awesome to be able to play all of these games and again because this is a really portable format it doesn't take a lot of space this is really excellent Duke Nukem 3D for example is another classic came out a little bit later but still early enough to play very smoothly on this Pentium 200 MMX. And let's conclude our round of games with Quake, another classic from 1996. This is running well. It doesn't have the 3D FX uh, wow effect, obviously, but you know, in the default resolution, it definitely runs fine. If you bump up the video resolution to the maximum, it does struggle somewhat, but 640 by 480 is definitely playable on this machine. And that kind of wraps up our little tour of the Toshiba 310 CDT satellite laptop. I mean, I really like the form factor of this thing. I like the color. I like the feeling that it brings. Um, this is a very recognizable laptop because, you know, back in the day, you didn't have like a million different brands putting out a million different laptop types. You only had the big companies like Compaq, IBM, Toshiba, that had a limited set of laptop models so for that reason this is a very recognizable system uh, i really uh, like it a lot i like the fact that it's modern enough to run some of the more modern games but it's also old enough to give it that really retro look so i'm really happy with this purchase i hope you've enjoyed this video somewhat if you did please give it a thumbs up consider subscribing let me know if you want to see more of this laptop and in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you guys in a future video. Bye-bye.